Thank you for joining me today for a few moments in God's Word. We'd like to talk to you for a few moments about God's love, a love that cancels uh, our sin and uh, the issues of life that we face are uh, covered and uh, we are cleansed and made pure and holy and acceptable to God because of God's love. And it is that kind of love that uh, gives us protection, gives us safety, gives us value, gives us the opportunity to be able to love others. And uh, we want to look at one verse of scripture that is very prominent when we talk about God's love. And that is 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 8, where Peter exhorts us when he says, And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. And uh, this verse has such magnitude and volume of the importance of, and the value of love. Not only love received, but love given and invested. Uh, the first highlight that we see in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8, is that love is above all things. Just think about that for a moment. Everything, anything, all things. Love is preeminent above all things. And uh, when you think about dealing with uh, issues of life and circumstances, differences of opinion, things that have happened to you or done to you by others, uh, above all those things uh, is love. It reigns preeminent. I believe that is not only in the realm of human existence, but I believe that it is in the realm of spiritual existence. I believe that above everything in God's mind and heart is his love for mankind. And when we look at 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, uh, we'll notice that he's talking about being serious and watchful in our prayers. And uh, when we pray, our motivation should be uh, first love for God and then love for one another. There's a little chorus when I was a, a boy that was saying quite often uh, in church, Jesus and others and you, what a wonderful way to spell joy. And that puts Jesus first, others second, and then yourself and I believe that it is as important uh, that we love ourselves in, in a way that we uh, follow the teaching of Jesus, uh, doing unto others the golden rule as you would have them do unto you. So when you think about expressing love or showing love, uh, how do you measure that? How, uh, what extent do you go? Well, uh, what extent would you like people to go in showing you? Would you like for it to be uh, just a passing thought? Would you like for it to be half-hearted? Or would you like it to be full-hearted? Uh, that there is no doubt, no question, no hesitancy. And that that thought, action, word, deed uh, toward you and then you toward others would leave a lasting uh confidence and assurance that you do care about them and that they are loved. And uh, when we uh, look at these verses, uh, 4 and 7, uh, talking about praying and being uh, uh, aware of the needs of others, aware of what's going on, what's important to be able to take care of the moment, uh, those things should be done uh, out of a motivation of love, first for God, because we, we can only give love as we have received it from the Lord. Uh, I don't think by nature uh, 
that we are loving uh, as God is and that it is something that we really need to work on and apply time uh, in prayer, in meditation, in study, uh, in communication, learning what really makes people feel that they are loved. Uh, that's the love languages that we hear about so often. Uh, many Bible scholars argue or debate uh, that this could be interpreted as a command to hold love preeminent above prayer. And if you study uh, not only Paul's teachings, but the teachings of Jesus while he was on earth, uh, Jesus puts love right at the top. God's word says the first and great commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. And the second likened to the first, love thy neighbor as thyself. And uh, in the area of being able to love, you really can't uh, feel, show, express, or experience love unless there is acceptance uh, and forgiveness. There, there needs to be a removal of the thought and conversation of how I've been hurt or how you have hurt me or the things that have happened that create a issue between us. If we're going to be able to feel and experience love and, and that it is real in that it causes us to feel uh, safe and secure, uh, we need to be able to remove all the uh, negativity, the darkness, the disappointments, the wounds, uh, the issues that have developed in life, those need to be uh, cleansed and covered and cast aside and put under the blood of Jesus, covered by the love of God and the forgiveness of God, and uh, continually taken to the Lord so that we can stay free from the things that would hinder love or destroy love. Jesus put love right at the top. Uh, he answers the Pharisees' questions about the greatest commandment, Matthew uh, 22, 35 through 40. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind, this is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it. Uh, love your neighbor as yourself. All, now look at that. There it is in verse 40 when we say that love is above all things. Listen to verse 40, Matthew 22. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments, loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself. Paul confirms the passage in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13, when he says, Now uh, these three things remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Uh, he's comparing love with other Christian virtues and teachings, including tongues and prophecy, prophecy the gifts of the Spirit, knowledge, faith, a faith that even can move mountains, charity uh, to the extent of giving everything you have, even uh, your own body uh, to the extent that you would, that would be expected and fulfilling what love is. And when we look at the way we treat one another, the way that we hold one another at a distance, the way that we scrutinize and question the motivations of how people treat us. And we should probably do more examination of how we treat others than we are examining how others treat us. But uh, we, we really need to uh, grasp the importance of first being loved by God, understanding God's love, and then loving others, doing unto them the golden rule, do unto others as you would have, you're, you're seed planting. You're, you're demonstrating by actions and attitude and reactions of how you would want them to respond to you. 
uh, if we look at Colossians chapter 3 and verse 14, it says, But above all things, put on love, uh, which is the bond of perfection. Here Paul's putting love above virtues like mercy and kindness and humility and meekness and patience, uh, bearing with each other uh, in the area of forgiveness. He puts love above all those things. Uh, if you look at Romans 8, uh, or Romans 13, verse 8 through 10, Paul affirms this further by saying that love is the fulfillment of the laws and love is the only debt that we owe to each other. And uh, I, I believe that it is a debt that is never fully satisfied. It's never fully paid in full. Uh, when you think about love, uh, is there a limit? Is there a boundary uh, from God? No, there isn't. His love, the song that we've sang through the years, his love has no limit. His grace has no measure. His power has no boundary known unto man. For out of his infinite, infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and he giveth and he giveth again. Why? Because the motivation of God is not finding fault or judgment or that the letter of the law would bring us to death. But the motivation of God is a heart of love for mankind. Uh, uh, the second highlight of the verse would be the fervent nature of love. Peter's not talking about just love, but he's talking about fervent love. And uh, to understand the real meaning of that, you could get into a word study and look in the original context uh, there in the New Testament is comes from the Greek, and it uh, the word really means earnest, stretched beyond measure. Uh, intense, that it's not uh, passive, but it's active and it's constant and it's exerted with full measure of passion and compassion. And uh, Peter's not talking about just love or caring about somebody, but going to whatever extent and measure you need to go until they have felt, uh, experienced, that love that you've received from God, and now you're giving and sharing that love with others. Uh, the word implies deep and sincere, uh, consistent. Uh, it's, it's a constant, not fluctuating emotion or passion or concern. It's not just for the moment or, oh, I thought of this, but every time you think of them, every time you see them. Uh, it is love that wells up within your spirit and your heart and your mind. And even in times of uh, difference of opinion and issues, uh, your love goes beyond the issue. And that is what ultimately we should strive to make sure is there in times of disagreement, in times of of uh, lack of harmony and issues develop that they know at the beginning, during what's happening and after, our love remains consistent and same uh, and the same, and it is fervent always. Peter's not talking about uh, a love that has a limit that I will love you as long as, and we have a boundary that we, once we come to that, then love stops or it fades. No, it's consistent, constant, fervent. Uh, it is above all things, even in the times of difficulty. We see this word used in Luke 22, verse 44. It says, Jesus being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. So the passion of Christ as he was praying to his father, uh, even in a moment of pain, uh, emotional, physical, spiritual, mental anguish, Jesus was even more fervent as he talked to his father uh, than he was before all this began to happen. 
uh, his sweat became, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And it shows the emotional uh, distress, partly because of what he was feeling and experienced, but even greater than the distress he was feeling mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, he was earnestly pressing to talk to the Father out of his love for his Father and out of his love for mankind. Uh, it describes the intensity of the passion of Christ as he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. Fervent prayer, under extreme distress, he pushed himself to continue to communicate to God how urgent, how necessary, how important it was for God to help him so that he could complete what he had come to earth to do. He succeeded in reaching beyond the ultimate level of what others had extended, and he became the express image of God's love to mankind, a love that does whatever is required and meets the requirement and exceeds it out of love and compassion and passion for the souls of mankind. Uh, it, it is the result of moving uh, ourselves out of what it costs us and how difficult it is for us and moving ourselves into the position of the person that needs to feel, see, experience, and hear that we love them, no matter what it costs us, that we communicate that and remain in that position. That is exactly what Jesus did when he came to the earth, exactly what he fulfilled when he allowed himself to be nailed to that cross, and gave himself willingly on our behalf out of love. It was what was required, and he wanted to pass the requirement and exceed it so that there was no doubt and no question of how he and how God felt. It's, it's the same word, Greek word, used in Acts 12, verse 5. It says, So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. In other words, they did, didn't talk about, oh, did you hear? Peter's in prison and uh, he's going to be tried. Uh, no, they went to prayer. And uh, while he was there, and in fact, until he knocked on the door and came in, they continued to pray. And I believe that needs to be our heart as believers. We need to not just have a momentary uh, passing thought and uh, say, let's stop and pray for, but be in a constant attitude of prayer, that they're on your heart, they're in your uh, conversation, they're in your devotion, and you're bearing them before the Lord until uh, the miracle is accomplished and the message of God's love has been received. Uh, it's a term that Paul uses in his address to King Agrippa in Acts 26, 7. The promise of the 12 tribes are hoping to see fulfilled as they earnestly serve God. And listen to this, day and night. It's 24, 7, seven days a week, 365 plus one in leap year that we never relent. We never take time off or allow it to be non-important. Uh, but we keep it on our heart and keep it before God, keep it in our conversation and our actions and reactions, and make sure that we maintain sufficient love from the Father in us so that we have sufficient love to share from us to those around us. So the love that Peter talks about in 1 Peter chapter 4, 8 is not just simple love, uh, it's not just physical love or emotional love. It's a fervent, earnest love, a consistent love, a sincere love, and an intense love. Uh, the third highlight that we can draw from 
this verse of scripture, 1 Peter 4, 8. Uh, it's a love that covers all sin. It is above all things. It is a fervent love and it covers all. It covers everything. It covers every attitude and every word and every conversation and every look and glance and, and response. The love of God uh, to us covers all that. Uh, it covers the penalty of the law and the failure to meet and satisfy the law uh, from God to us. And then it allows us uh, to cover all the issues that exist and love them out of a pure love, a fervent love, an intense love. And uh, even in the most loving relationships, there's going to be uh, difficulties and times of crisis and differences of opinion. There's always going to be problems that crop up, but we must maintain our love for God and God's love through us to those around us. Uh, first Peter tells us that it covers all situations, all circumstances, all sins, all attitude. The love is above everything. Nothing remains more important than love. God's love for us, our love for the Father, and our love for one another as we love ourselves. Uh, the English language uh, uses the word love in a multitude of contexts, but the Greek language in which the New Testament is written distinguishes love at least in four different forms. And if you've ever read the book Four Loves by C.S. Lewis, uh, the first is eros. It's the love that arises out of a romantic passion. Uh, then the second term for love in the New Testament is storge, and it stands for familiar or family love. Uh, and then the third type is filio, and this is the deep, intense, warm affection uh, for brotherly love, uh, for friends and those that are part of the body of Christ. And then finally, the fourth aspect of love in the New Testament is agape love. This is the most sacrificial. It is the love that we are to love God with. It is the love that God loves us with. And it is the love that we should love others with. Uh, and the same love that we should love ourselves. Uh, it's a sacrificial love, a love that cares, has compassion and passion, gives and continues to work to its fulfillment and satisfaction. No matter how the other person may respond or treat you, you need to be able to maintain the love of God and the love for God and use that as your measuring device to see if you are loving others in an appropriate way. 1 Corinthians 13 describes in detail uh, the, the the use of this word love and tells us what love is and what love is not. Uh, the first help that we uh, can find, in fact, is that we have security in that God never fails, never ceases, never stops. Even when we are uh, in penalty and transgression of God's laws, he still loves us, and that is what allows him to forgive us and allows him to accept us when we repent and turn toward him. We, we need to understand and accept that God's love is unconditional <clears throat> in that while we were yet sinners, Christ, out of his love for his Father and out of his love for fallen mankind, died in our place unconditional love. Uh, God's love is unwavering. If we look at uh, Jeremiah 31, verse 3, tells us, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. Just think about that. There is no limit. God's love will not fail. 
His kindness will not fail, and it is everlasting. Uh, it won't run out. It won't diminish. Uh, secondly, God's love is sacrificial. Isaiah 43, verse 3 through 4, Because I am God, your personal God, the Holy of Israel, your Savior, uh, I paid a huge price for you, all of Egypt with rich Cush and Seba thrown in. That's how much you mean to me. That's how much I love you. I'd sell the, off the whole world to get you back. Trade creation just for you. How extraordinary is that? Listen to it again. Uh, look what I've done, God says. I'm your God, your Savior, the Holy One of Israel. I paid a huge price for you, all of Egypt, with rich Cush and Seba thrown in. That's how much you mean to me. That's how much I love you. I'd sell off the whole world to get you back. Trade creation just for you. Oh, love of God, how rich, how pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure, the saints and angels' song. We need to understand the two aspects of God's love that will give us security and uh, help us maintain uh, right relationships in every area of our life with every person we'll meet, with our family, with the brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, with God himself. Uh, and it's in knowing and accepting and abiding in God's love. Stay in God's love. Receive God's love. Praise him for his love. Thank him for his love. Share his love. Testify about how much God loves you, how much he loves others, and be the express image and testimony of God's love in the way you act and react, in the way you think about others, the way you talk about others, the way that you receive others. Then uh, uh, the second help we can find in the teachings and the life of Jesus himself, uh, a life and a love that covered every situation, every human being, even those who were diseased, even those that were cast out, even those that continued a life of immoral uh, sin and disobedience to God's laws, Jesus reached out and offered and expressed the mercy, the grace, the forgiveness, and the love of God that was the motivation of all that he taught. Uh, John 13, 1 through 17 is a good place to study. Uh, but if you look at verse 1 of John 13, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Ah, uh, uh, so often we find in our world that boundaries have been set and limits have been established and that once that's reached, we forsake and walk away. Uh, God never is in that position. There's times that we put him in a position where we can't receive from him because of the choices that we've made. But it is always in God's heart, always, always, always. Uh, no matter how far we fall, no matter what we do, God's heart is always toward us and loving and wanting us to repent and come to him so that he can love us and that we can be loved by him. Uh, there lies the ultimate secret that we are searching for in life, and that is that we need to practice uh, 1 Peter 4 verse 8, the type of love that God gives us on earth. Uh, a love that serves others and not so much yourself. A uh, love that follows the message of Christ and not uh, as a response of what way we've been treated or what's going on in our society, uh, but a love that is the greatest force in the universe, the love of God, love toward our fellow man, and the love of God in us that keeps a proper attitude toward how we 
look at ourselves uh, through the eyes of God and through the grace, mercy, and love of God that we can really begin to experience and understand what it means to be covered by God's love. And that is what I pray for you today, that you will experience and be able to live in, uh, rest uh, sufficiently each night and work each day knowing that you are loved by God and that his love is sufficient, uh, overflowing, and that if you walk in it and embrace it, you will have more than enough love for others as well as your own self. And I pray that you would experience that love today and each day until we stand in the presence of the Lord. Father, I just thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, for the cleansing. Thank you that you've canceled the debt of sin that we owe. Thank you, Lord, that you've covered us through the blood of your son, Jesus, and you have covered us and filled us with your love. And I praise you today, Lord, for causing that to just bubble over uh, from within each of us as your children, to our fellow man, to our family, to our brothers and sisters in the church, and that, Lord, we will be able to live and uh, finish this journey on earth in this human existence, uh, knowing your love and sharing your love in such great proportion as you have loved us. I praise you for it, and I thank you for it in Jesus' wonderful name. May God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day.